Can you recall a time as a teacher where you provided some instruction which you thought was well done, yet the students performed poorly on an exam of the material? Or how about as a student? Can you remember a class with instruction that you received, and after you completed the instruction, you felt like you hadn't learned a thing? Or how about in the workplace? Have you ever had job training that you felt didn't really help you advance your work skills? We probably all could recall situations such as these. And perhaps at the root of the problem was the fact that the designers of the instruction didn't properly identify the instructional goals up front. First and foremost in the instructional design process is identifying instructional goals. Let's take the next few minutes to examine the process of doing what we call front-end analysis to identify needs and goals before we start to develop instruction. We've seen a graphical representation of the Dick and Carey model of instruction. This model is supposed to help us break down the complexities of instructional design and look at the pieces involved in the process. Let's see if that model can help us by starting with this first phase of the model, the analysis phase. Front-end analysis is that part of the process where we look to define our goals, look at our learners and the context in which learning will take place, and look at the tasks that will be involved in the learning. These three pieces make up the analysis phase. With this phase, we are trying to answer questions before we actually start to put together materials and develop the instruction. Put simply, we want to know what is the problem or need? Where will the learning occur? Who is the target audience? And what tasks will be involved in the learning? These are the basic building blocks of the analysis phase of instructional design. Start by asking what the problem or need is. Why are you looking to develop the instruction at all? Is this something that can be solved without instruction? Have you ever worked at a job where the company made you go through some training that you thought wasn't necessary, but the company required the training for everyone, and the problem really could have been solved by telling the one person who was doing something incorrectly to change their behavior? These kinds of things happen often, yet we sometimes determine that some unnecessary instruction will be required. The very first thing you should get clear is determining if instruction will be required to solve your problem or need. Okay, so instruction will be needed. So we'll look at what is actually happening and compare that to what we desire. That difference between the desired status and the actual status can be thought of as the need. Your job as an instructional designer will be to fill that gap or need. In order to fill that gap, you're going to need to write some statements. These statements will clearly define the need, and most importantly, these statements must be able to be verified. If you don't verify the need, how will you know that you're starting in the right direction? After you've identified the need, you're likely going to craft a goal, goals, or objectives. You've thought these goals through a little bit, and you feel like you can write them down. That's good, but before you write them, think about these questions. Will your goals be acceptable to those that asked you to develop the instruction? Are the goals clear and measurable? Will there be expertise available to help you solve the instructional goal? Are time and resources available? And will some learners be available during the development phase so that you can refine your instruction along the way? These are important questions. You may find that developing instruction will be impossible or a waste of time and resources if you find that you are answering no to most of these questions.
If you've made it through getting those questions answered, and now you're feeling like your process can move forward, you're going to want to write a goal statement. How do we go about writing this statement? Start by creating a list of behaviors that the learners will need to perform in order to demonstrate that the goal has been achieved. Then write a clear statement of the goal. I often like to use the sentence, Upon successful completion of this instruction, the learner will, and fill in the list of behaviors after the will. I'm not necessarily saying that all goal statements should begin this way, but I found it as a useful technique to help me begin to write clear goal statements. Here's an example that I might use for the syllabus for an instructional design course. Upon successful completion of this course, students will gain instructional design, factual knowledge and techniques, learn fundamental principles, generalizations, and theories of instructional design, and apply course material to real-world instructional problems. Notice that this statement is concise and clear, yet doesn't address every detail of the instruction or list every principle. Brevity and clarity in your goal statements will serve as a beacon to help you keep your design focused. You've got your goal statements written and might think that you're done. Sound instructional design will not stop there, however. One important step will be to take your goal or goals and analyze the list of behaviors that you created in order to write the goal. Analyze that expanded list of behaviors and select the best ones that will demonstrate success. Incorporate those behaviors into statements that describe what your learners will demonstrate and then review your goal statement to ensure that your goal is still correct. Determine if learners who demonstrate the list of behaviors will have accomplished that goal. How does one go about doing that? Let's use a taxonomy table. So there you have it. The five steps of analyzing your needs and defining your goals during the analysis phase of the instructional design process. Thank you.